President Muhammad Buhari will be heading into his second term in office come May 29, 2019. In the first four years, he had set the fight against corruption, security and economic revival as his targets. Now the target is to do more over the next four years. What are the plans and projections of the administration? How have they fared in the last four years? On this week's episode of the program, my guest takes a look at the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari. There, welcome to Dateline Abuja. I'm Gloria Umezuki. Amidst security concerns in the nation's capital, the police in the Federal Capital Territory is assuring residents that efforts are being made to ensure that criminals do not have their way. We have details of that story later on the program. In our interview segment this week, we talk about plans and vision of the administration of President Muhammad Buhari. But first, what are the stories that made headlines within the week in the nation's capital? Investment in Nigeria's oil industry and the receding Lake Chad are some of the issues discussed by President Muhammadu Buhari when he met with the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Hamad Al Thani. The President also seeks investment in the power sector, aviation, agriculture and education. Meanwhile, the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, has accepted to co-chair a special session to raise $50 billion to fund inter-basin water transfer to revive the Lake Chad. The President of the Africa Development Bank, Dr. Akiomi Adeshino, delivered Mr. Guterres' response to President Buhari's earlier letter. He spoke to State House correspondents after meeting President Buhari. I came to give Mr. President the account of what has happened at the bank, and quite a lot has happened at the bank in the last uh, three years. Uh, I briefed him on the fact that uh, in Nigeria we have uh, 60 operations in Nigeria here uh, for a total of $4.5 billion. Um, you know, and you have you know, about $2.8 billion of that. It's in the private sector, uh, in the banking industry, financial uh, sector in particular, about $1.7 billion uh, in, the, in the public sector. We have a number of very exciting projects here that I'm very, very uh, excited about. One is the, the transmission of power. It continues to be, Mr. President mentioned this to me, the power continues to be a problem. Uh, we're investing about over $400 million in the transmission company of Nigeria to continue to improve the power transmission. But also we've invested heavily in the northeast of Nigeria. Uh, you know, we put in about uh, almost $258 million uh, to support uh, the, uh, the plan there, the northeast rehabilitation, uh, both in terms of uh, education, in health, sanitation, and water, and also skills. You know, and this is a way of reviving areas that have been battered. And uh, I, I told Mr. President that's very important. Uh, the other things that we have in the country is uh, we invest quite a lot in, you know, um, in, in mobilizing financing for the country. I briefed the president that Nigeria continues to be an investment frontier and that uh, the Africa Investment Forum, which the African, Invest, uh, African Development Bank held last year, we were able to uh, mobilize uh, $38.7 billion of investments to Africa in less than 72 hours. The Senate has postponed the passage of the 2019 budget till Tuesday, April 30. The Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, announced the postponement during Wednesday's plenary session and asked the Senate clerk to make copies of the budget report available to lawmakers by Monday, April 29. The chairman of the Senate Committee on Appropriation, Senator Danju Magoje, had laid the budget report before the Senate on April 17. However, he was absent at plenary session to present the report. Some of the members that we have not got uh, printed copies of the details and have directed the clerk to make sure that latest by Monday we all have printed copies of it so that everybody can see the details of the budget. And by so doing, then we can now pass it on Tuesday. Because uh, the practice of our practice, yeah, necessarily the after we, everybody has got the copies because we don't want to run into a problem where we, we pass it without details and our colleagues will, will not you know, comment on that. So please 
clerk ensure that everybody has copies of the details by Monday and then we pass the next legislative day. President Mohamed Buhari has proceeded on a private visit to the United Kingdom. A statement by Mr. Femi Adishino, Senior Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, has confirmed this. He is expected to return to Nigeria on May 5, 2019. In the meantime, President Muhammad Buhari is expected to preside over a valedictory session of the Federal Executive Council on May 22nd. The Minister of Information and Culture told State House correspondents after this week's council meeting. The cabinet is still intact. Uh, we are going to have the budget service on the 22nd of um, May. So you've seen how, you've seen it to suffer how small. Meanwhile, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, presided over the Federal Executive Council where approval was given for the provision of the electronic monitoring device at the nation's borders at the cost of 52 billion naira. Sometimes since 2012, but uh, we picked it up and to move forward when we came in. Uh, the process is supposed to com be completed within the next two years. It will cost about 52 billion naira. This project is going to cover 86 border posts in the country and also will be able to monitor those uh, illegal routes which we have identified as about 1,400 of them. We'll be able to monitor those illegal routes that are used for smuggling uh, and all kinds of uh, uh, cross-border uh, criminal activities. The Senate is inviting the Acting Inspector General of Police, Mr. Mohamed Adamu, to brief lawmakers on the security situation in the country, particularly what the police is doing to address the rampant kidnappings and banditry across the country. The Senate resolved to invite the Acting Inspector General of Police after a debate on the killing of two humanitarian workers and abduction of three others at Kujuru Castle in Kaduna State on April 19. So I would like to recommend further that we invite the Acting Inspector General of Police to come and brief the Senate next week on the situation, the security situation, especially kidnapping across Nigeria. In the meantime, the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Mohamed Adamu, has reduced the shift duty structure for policemen. Henceforth, Mr. Adamu ordered with immediate effect a change in the work hours of officers to an eight-hour, three-shift duty as opposed to the current 12-hour, two-shift duty structure. Argument have been raised that the re resonating incidents of misuse of firearms and other extrajudicial actions by police personnel often result directly from the work-related stresses and emotional conditions which disorient their rationality. In consideration of this, I have ordered that, with immediate effect, the shift duty structure of the Nigerian police, which is currently a 12-hour, two-shift system, should be reverted to the traditional eight hours, three shift. <laughs> this directive is specifically informed by the need to address a major age-long occupational stressors, which long hours of duty in, in dangers among personnel in the Nigeria police force, and which occasion depression and abuse of power and other unprofessional conduct. All of this, if not medically managed, could engender unprofessional reactions with fatal consequences to the affected police personnel and members of the public. The Islamic movement of Nigeria has staged a series of peaceful protests in the nation's capital, demanding the release of their leader, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zagzaki. <laughs> The rallies, which was held at the National Assembly and the United Nations House, are being held to mark the 68th birthday of the Sheikh. The responsibility of the United Nations is uh, providing peace and security to, to, to all nations that belong to it. But in this case, we have somebody at the seat of the presidency here in Nigeria who committed crime against humanity. And the United Nations is, 
is keeping mute to some extent over this issue.